Okay, hi, we're gonna finish up the introduction of complex numbers by finishing up the section on what we like to call as the nth roots of a complex number. Okay, nth roots of a complex number. Something which you may not have been seen before, you have, or you have only seen n roots of a real number, so this is n roots of a complex number. It's a little bit more complex if you may think about it, but after some careful looking at all the formulas, you will see what I mean. Okay, we are given a complex number z equals to a plus bi or r times cosine theta plus i sine theta. Okay, so this is a complex number. So what do we mean by the nth roots of a complex number? Well, the nth root would simply mean this. Does that seem logical enough? The end root of this. Now, if you're not too experienced with radicals, this may seem a bit intimidating. But never mind, what this simply means is that this end root will give us a number like so. Right? And let's just take both sides to the power of n. So we'll get z equals to b to the power of n. So the nth root of a complex number will give us a certain number, which is, let's just say, call it b, and we will take that number to the power of n, and then we will get z. Okay, I say that again. The nth root of a complex number is a certain number that when we take that number to the power of n, we get back the complex number z. Okay, so before we go on, because there's a formula to find um, this number over here, which is a long formula, but, but when you remember it, you can apply it right away. I'll also show you how to derive that formula. But just by looking at this statement, we should at least try to grasp what, how many solutions there are, or how many roots are there in this equation. Assuming n is equal to 5. Okay, so how many solutions are there for b to this equation? Well, you may not know because you would definitely know something like this. Okay, x to the power of 5, x to the power of 4, all the way to a constant term, the roots would be 5. We have 5 maximum roots, or if you, 5 roots in total if you include the multiplicity, meaning to say roots of 0 3 times is counted as 3 roots. So, likening that to this, Though that I believe the way to prove it is using the fundamental theorem of algebra, which I will try to show one day, there are five roots to this equation. Meaning to say, there are five solutions to the number b, just like how there are five solutions to, to the x for your normal polynomial equations. So, I would just like to change that to w, okay? And then we'll tackle this one here, x equals to w to the power of n, wi, okay, here we go, wi, Bearing in mind that I would be, if we start from 1, there will be n solutions, okay? It will be r, 1 over n times by cosine, open a big bracket, theta plus 2k n, sorry, 2k pi, divided by n, close bracket, plus i sine theta plus 2k pi over n, close bracket, and close, there we go. Quite big, that's why I'm going to write it big because it takes a lot of space, but let's just look at it carefully. So, the first solution, okay, sorry, I need to finish up when k is equals to 0, 1, 2, all the way to n minus 1. Reason being, just like how I solved one of the problems, we started from 0, so there are n, there are n terms over here. Yeah, we start from 0, n minus 1, so there are n terms, just like how there are n solutions to this, to this equation. That means k can, there are, k can take different numbers, I mean k can be 0, 1, 2, 3, and it's n different values of k. Yeah, n different values of k. That will give us n different solutions. Okay, so what does this mean? It means that if we apply this formula, bearing in mind r and theta would come from the complex number z, r and theta over here, we can generate, so to speak, the nth roots of this equation by substituting values of k inside here, 
knowing that k starts from 0 and goes all the way to n minus 1. Having said that, so the first solution, logically speaking, would be w1. For example's sake, let's just go n equals to 4, theta equals to pi over 4. So the first solution, n1, would be equals to an r, we will put r as, let's just say 2. That means the first solution is k equals to 0, so w1 would be 2 to the power of 1 over 4 cosine pi over 4 and it's 0 over here so it's plus, um, plus 0 pi which we, and over 4 and likewise we'll do it for the sine function as well okay this is our first solution and then later we will change the values of k so we put 1 inside here we will add 2 pi Reason being, because as you know that the cosine function always repeats itself, it has a period of that. However, because of the cosine and sine, things changes a bit. But all you need to know is that you can just simply put values of k inside there. And then likewise, you generate w2. Okay, and we'll go all the way down here. So this number, when we put it to the power of 4, okay, that would give us the complex number z. Does that make sense? For w2, we will put this to the power of 4, that will give us the complex number z, because all these are the nth roots of the complex number z. 